Okay, what else, nachos, what do you want? Oh, you want jalapenos? Love that for us, here we go. Hey, Naisha, it's me, your favorite chef. Well, sometimes. Now, we all love a tropical vacation and I'd like to see what you can cook up if you were stranded on a tropical island. Now, I've left some exciting ingredients on the platform and I can't wait to see what you're gonna cook up. Good luck. Amazing, and I know just the place to take us on Next Level Kitchen, Hawaii. So for this amazing sort of Hawaiian experience, I've rated the platform, I got some killer ingredients, and this is really simple. This is a fun play on sort of a poke meets nachos. First up, I always like to start with what takes the longest. I have some hot sort of neutral oil here, and I'm going to cut these beautiful um, wonton chips, which will bring some beautiful texture to these uh, poke nachos, which generally you might see um, tortillas. So I've just cut them in half and I'm going to drop them in the fryer. Whenever frying, you wanna make sure that the oil is hot, you're not uh, waiting on it to become hot and you wanna not overcrowd the pan so that everything has the opportunity to become crispy. I'm just sort of swirling around the oil. One of the most important key ingredients whenever frying is to season right when it comes out of the oil. Today I'm actually using these beautiful wonton chips and I'm flavoring it with furikake, which is like bonito flake and sesame seed and um, sort of this beautiful crushed nori. You can totally buy this or you can make it at home. And so this will act as my um, sort of salt and stick to these uh, beautiful chips, adding a ton of umami and depth of flavor from the seaweed. Love that. So I'm gonna just allow the chips to set aside while we build our poke. And so you wanna get some gorgeous, high quality tuna. You can also use salmon, you can use yellowtail, you can make it vegetarian with shiitake mushrooms. The world is your oyster. I just happen to have tuna here today. So one of the things I love about a beautiful classic poke is actually not dicing the fish too small. You wanna know what you're eating, you wanna taste the beautiful high quality fish. So I actually um, sort of run my knife down vertically, creating these longer strips. And then I just run it on its side and create sort of a dice. Really simple. I had the opportunity to spend a good amount of time in Hawaii and I literally ate this almost every day. You're gonna find this all over Hawaii. So just dicing. So one thing that you wanna look for, um, there's different parts of the tuna. Um, so when you are cutting your tuna, you wanna look for anything that's um, this sort of sinew or this tougher part of the tuna and you wanna cut against that, or you can just go in and scrape it with a spoon. Now that we have our diced tuna, what we're gonna do is just create this really light marinade. So I go in with a little bit of soy. It's gonna give us that saltiness. So you wanna balance this out with something that's rich and fatty. I like to use sesame oil. Love the flavor of toasted sesame oil. And a little bit goes a long way, so be sparingly with it. And to fortify that sesame flavor, actually use whole toasted sesame seeds. We're also gonna add edamame, uh, which kind of acts like the beans that you might see in a traditional nacho, um, but just kind of a, a little bit of a healthier version. And I also am gonna add just a little bit of a, a gochugaro or a Korean chili flake. So Korean chili flake, really delicious, tons of depth of flavor, but not overly spicy, just adds a nice little smoky kick to it. With the onion, very particular. You wanna actually look at your onion. Not all onions are created the same. Create a sturdy base, cut down through the root of the onion. And I like to cut them in these sort of beautiful half moons, kind of following the natural shape of the onion. So I'll use the base of the knife and just sort of run through, kind of trying to hit the center of that onion so they all appear aesthetically beautiful, right? We, we eat with our eyes first toss in some beautiful raw onion. So now we're just going to gently toss this together. And what I wanna do is allow this fish to marinate while we actually build the other components of our poke nachos. Always taste as you go. Mm, mm, mm. Tiny bit more soy. So what I'm gonna get from the soy is a little bit of um, saline or salt content. I'm actually not gonna add salt to this. We get a little bit of salt from the furikake and a natural salt from the soy sauce. I'm just gonna add a touch of black pepper and that's gonna give us some beautiful smoky notes. 
So I just give this a little bit of a toss and set that aside. So to sort of like mimic the idea of nacho cheese, I'm actually gonna make um, a beautiful Japanese mayo and sriracha kind of spicy chili aioli moment. So take a good amount of Japanese mayo I like to use tends to be a little bit richer, uh, more viscous, or a little bit thicker. And a little bit of chili sauce, about equal parts of the Japanese mayo and chili sauce. I'm a big spicy food fan, so I tend to go a little bit heavy on the chili. So lucky I rated this off of the platform. It's really hard to come by at Sriracha these days, so I was lucky that I snagged it off the platform. So you want this nice little creamy mixture here. Again, taste as you go. The Japanese mayo is already seasoned. There's seasoning in the sriracha, so I'm not really gonna bother with adding a lot of salt to this. So we have two components down already. Tuna's marinating, our delicious spicy aioli is sitting to the side. Believe it or not, the hardest part of this dish is already done. Just gonna cut a few garnishes. I love fresh scallion. It's one of my favorite ingredients. I use them almost every morning in my eggs. I'm actually just gonna use the tops of the scallions and I like to cut them on a bias. So they sort of intertwine with the chips, right? So a nice hard bias, nice thin slices. And you know, I just love nachos and dishes that you can eat with your hands are sort of fun. Um, fussy, I spend a lot of time in fancy French kitchens, so anytime I can just get in there with my hands and um, have a nice cold sake with some ahi pokey nachos, kind of sounds like a fun moment, right? Um, just for a little bit of healthiness to the dish, I'm gonna add um, some cucumber and just sort of slice this. Don't worry about it being super thin. Again, these are just elements or a guideline. You can totally um, have fun with this and use the ingredients that you have in your home, right? It doesn't have to be exactly how I'm making it. I think that's really the beauty of cooking is to have fun and bring the joy in it, right? Um, in this dish, we're bringing that aloha spirit. I had the opportunity to spend a lot of time in Hawaii. I lived there for about a year in Maui and um, it was some of the best memories of my life. Um, so again, big spicy food fan, so I'm gonna add some beautiful fresh chili. You can use jalapeno, you can use bell pepper if you don't like spicy, um, but really this is just to meant to give um, the nacho kind of vibe and a little bit of spice note at the back end. And of course, we have to have some beautiful avocado. They're nachos. I feel like avocados are so naturally delicious and bring a sort of um, creaminess to the nacho. So there's not really much I actually want to do with this. You can totally fork smash it, make a guacamole, add some lime, a little bit of cumin um, if you'd like. But I love the natural flavor of avocado, especially when you have a nice one. So I'm actually just going to um, slice this and kind of maybe fan it over top. Okay, believe it or not, that is everything that we have to do. I mean, easy dish, right? Think about friends over. This is a show-stopping kind of dish. Um, you can just say you made it. Don't say you got it from me. So really, we're just gonna start to assemble this and bring this together. So I like to use a wide base plate, right? To really show off and give you the opportunity to build those perfect bites along the way. So we have our beautiful furtakaki chips here. And we're just gonna pile them on, right? Um, kind of giving some texture, some, some shape, um, thinking about leaving space and how I'm building the structure of this nacho. Here we have our beautiful marinated ahi tuna. So I just like to dot in and think about where my guests are gonna look for building that perfect bite, right? I don't wanna cover the chips too much because they'll get soggy, right? So I wanna go in and be intentional with where I'm placing that beautiful ahi tuna. Plating's always the best part, right? It's just kind of getting all of your elements and your friends are starting to show up, everyone's watching the game. Now this is when you start to garnish, right? So for me, when I think about nachos, it's uh, a little bit of a lime wedge, so maybe some fresh cilantro on top, you know, maybe some sour cream. But in this instance, we have this beautiful um, spicy aioli. It's gonna act like a little bit of a creaminess. So I'm just gonna go in and sort of dot that looking and seeing where my guests can build that perfect bite. A little bit of fresh cucumber, just to keep it healthy. So fried shallots, just buy them, right? You don't have to go out and try to 
dirty up the whole kitchen. I love fried shallots. They give a beautiful texture, great flavor, um, and they taste just as good. A little fresh scallion over top. Super fun dish. A little fresh avocado. Do a little fancy fan. Just kind of opening up that cut there. Beauty. Okay, what else, nachos, what do you want? Oh, you want jalapenos? Love that for us. Here we go, a little fresh jalapeno. And cilantro, absolutely. Ah, oh, I love this. Okay, so a little bit of pickled ginger, right? It's giving like poke, but also by way of nacho. Gorgeous. A little bit of lime. Fun dish, touch of sesame. And because I love sauce, just got to go in with just a touch more, layer in this delicious spicy mayo. A touch more of the Korean red chili flake. Incredible. I feel like I had the best mac nuts when I was in Hawaii, and I'm going to show you a fun trick. Um, it, it's kind of like the Parmesan cheese on top of a pasta. So I actually take a microplane and I grate the macadamia nut over top, which kind of creates this beautiful snow effect to really elevate this beautiful nacho. Wow. I feel like I've literally just taken a trip to Hawaii. Thank you so much for watching. Now, please let me know in the comments what you think of the dish and don't forget to subscribe for more exciting videos. Thank you.